Welcome back. I'm uh, Michael. You're listening to the Michael Dresser Show. Mr. Lacario with us. Been featured on uh, the Dish Network, ABC Family, the Tower Bank Show, <laughs> Anderson Cooper. And he's also written for FlaggerHill.com, Singles Warehouse, uh, that's in the UK, Dating Advice, and the list goes on and on. He's a dating advice expert. And as a matter of fact, he has written a book called The Magnificent Ten, Crucial Dating Tips for Men. Mr. Lacario, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good. Am I, am I, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, you're pronouncing it perfectly. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, you Good. got it, Mr. Lucario. Okay, you know, when dating uh, happens, uh, you, I go all the way back, and this doesn't seem to work in today's world. You walk up to somebody and say, hi, what's your sign? Do you come here often? I don't think that works anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the thing the thing a lot of guys just need to do is just, you know, be honest and authentic. Just have a regular conversation. And, you know, that, that works most of the time. A lot of guys think too much about what to say and how to say it and all that other good stuff. So, yeah. you know, when you're a little bit more authentic, it's, it's easier for you. Oh, absolutely. But it's a completely different world today. You know, you go back 30, 40 years, dating was different. The way you have conversations were different. You know, in today's world, one of two things could happen. A woman walks by, you open the door, she says, thank you. A woman walks by, you open the door, and she says, hey, I can do that for myself. Get out of my face. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> it's, it's knowing where to go with that. What got, exactly. Well, we, what, what got you into this? Well, what, what caused you well, to look at this, the, the issue? Um, well, I mean, the thing, the thing with, you know, stuff like that, you know, right now it's a very, um, you know, uh, we have a lot of feminism going on. We have a lot of uh, women thinking that they don't necessarily need men. So that's why you have that issue where a guy opens the door for women and a woman's like, well, I can do it myself because, you know, women in today's age feel like they technically don't need a man for anything. Yeah. So, you know, that that's where you get that kind of attitude from. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know. It's scary out there anymore. But, you know, and I've noticed also, too, uh, you know, a lot of the advertising, too, they're making women more masculine, and they're making men more feminine. If you watch, right? Women, yeah, and and it, it, I'm my in my world, that's not right. But I've watched it, and you see this. It's um, how, what do I want to say? It's it's not real. It's it's this this vision that doesn't exist. And when you come down to it, that's where the problems start. Right. Yeah, because, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, for, for men, we're, we're supposed to be masculine and women are supposed to be feminine. It's like the, 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 yin and, the yin and the yang. It's supposed to have that balance, you know, and it's like it's, it's kind of unnatural a lot of times because a lot of times women don't even want to be, you know, in these like quote unquote leadership positions that they're in because they, a lot of women are frustrated that they can't even find a quote unquote real man because, you know, a lot of guys out here right now are conditioned to feel that they should kind of fall back and yeah. not be masculine. And, and masculinity is also looked down upon, you know, in today's, in today's society right now. So it's like harder for men to, you know, feel comfortable even being manly. You know, you know what I mean? So it's sure. like everything is kind of backwards. That's why, it's so, that's why I think it's so important today for someone, if they're going to go out into the dating scene, they should have a dating coach. They have somebody who knows what's going on so they don't have mm -hmm. to go out there and make mistakes and, and get insulted and hurt and go hide in a corner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, it, and it's good. You know, I tell people it's, it's good to actually have a coach, a dating coach. And, you know, with anything you're doing, if you're trying to do something and you want to do something, you know, right or you want to do something more efficient, it's always good to have somebody that knows about the, the topic or the subject that you're trying to do to help you along. You, you understand? So because there might be things that you're not seeing because, you know, if you're if you're in the picture, if you're in the situation, you might not see what's really going on. So you need somebody that's like can see from an objective standpoint so that coach just, you know, can see it from that objective standpoint and help you with whatever you're trying to do. Sure. Okay? Now, you know, the dating sites, which is very interesting. I was watching uh, cable the other night. It was kind of cable surfing and I hit one. It was very interesting. It's a dating for farmers. You know, they've got this point where, mm -hmm. you know, a farmer doesn't have anything in uh, 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 any kind of, uh, 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 anything in common with anybody else. So now they've got men and women, if you're farmers, date. And they're doing that all over the place. And, and, and effectively, doesn't that limit it, you know, to the ability to go out and find someone? Um, well, it's, we talk about, like, with, like, online dating and stuff yeah. like that, or yeah. just, uh, like, no, niching. Yeah, because, 
Yeah, because, you know, a lot of things, well, you know, the way that the world is now is that there's so many things happening on the Internet, and the Internet, you know, it's, it's, it's a relatively, I guess you could say, new thing in the past, like, couple decades where, you know, so now with Facebook and all these other different sites, people are so used to just meeting people online, and also they also have, like, a niche thing where you can, like, you, like a farmer can meet a farmer, or, you know, uh, uh, I met a, a guy the other day, he's doing an application about, you know, Albanian people meeting Albanian people, Latino Latino people mean Latino people, black people mean black people. So it has all these different, like, things, but it's all based on the Internet. And so, like, it's good in a way, you know, but it's kind of, you know, not good in a way. It's good in a way because you can communicate, you know, with other people in, you know, in a specific time frame where, let's say, if you're working all the time and you can actually just go online when you get home to meet somebody. But at the same time, with so much online communication, people start to lose that natural ability to talk to people in person. So it's kind of like, you know, you, it's kind of, it, it becomes awkward now to actually have this conversation with a person in person. So you don't, you're, you're not used to that anymore. You're getting used to just being online and responding to emails and Facebook messages and all these other things. Now, one, so, of, you know, so yeah. Yeah. one of the things you talk about, which I think is important uh, about men to date a lot of women. And I think that's extremely important because Let's say that you haven't, you know, you get divorced 10 years later, you haven't gone out with anybody, and then you meet somebody, mm-hmm. she happens to be nice, and you think you fall in love with her, but you're not falling in love with her, you're falling in love with the form, somebody there, right. and you have no idea what you missed out there. Right, right, exactly. You know, I tell guys it's, it's very important to, you know, date around and date a lot of women because it's, you know, it's about you discovering what you like, what you don't like. It's you really discovering yourself through those interactions. And, you know, it's, 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 it's good because it makes you have a better, like, informed decision as to if you're, like, let's say if you're trying to just have a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, if that's, like, your goal at some point, you know, you want to make sure that your wife or your girlfriend is the best type of woman for you, and you do that through dating around a lot of women and getting experience to see how women are around you, how they act, and how you feel in these situations so you don't end up with just, you know, some woman who decided to, to give you a chance or you feel like you're, you're, being, you're, you're lucky just to have this one girl, you know, talking to you. But if you have the skills and the know-how to talk to a lot of women, date a lot of women, you're in a better position to actually choose better when the time comes if you actually want to get married or you want to have a girlfriend or, you know, or you could just be a guy who wants to still date around and have fun. But either way, you have the option to do it because, you know, you know how to, to attract different types of women. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. Let's say, let, let's, let's walk through this. Let's say uh, I've decided that I need a dating coach. I don't know what I'm doing out there. So I call mm-hmm. you. We set up the time. What, what are our first steps? What do we do? How do you deal with me? What do you find out uh, before we move forward? Right. So what I usually do is, like, with a client, um, you know, I figure, well, they, they come to me and they tell me what their issue is, kind of like how if you go to a doctor, you go to a doctor and say, hey, doctor, I have, a, you know, some my neck hurts. And then he looks at your neck and then he kind of diagnoses it and then says, okay, this is what we need to do. So it's the same situation where a guy might come up to me, for example, I had a client who he's like, you know, I have approach anxiety. I'm, I'm scared to talk to women. Every time I talk to women, I freeze up. I don't know what to say and all this other stuff. So what I did was, you know, I took him out to see how he does just in general. I just wanted to see where he was at. And, you know, we kind of went out somewhere and he was kind of scared to go up to women. So he didn't really go up to anybody. So then I took him back and then I was like, okay, I'm going to teach you techniques. I'm going to teach you about confidence. So it's kind of like I go through a whole different, you know, um, you know, a variety of things. And then I kind of do certain training. So for example, what I do with him, since he was scared to talk to women, we did this exercise where we went into the, um, into the city and I said, look, you're going to go up to women and just ask the directions. So he was like, okay, that's pretty easy because in his mind, he's scared of rejection, but no one's going to really reject you for asking for directions. But what it does is that it gets him used to talking to women. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. Gets him out of his mind. You know what I mean? So then we do little things like that, and then so we go step by step, and eventually it helps him break out of that anxiety he has when talking with women because it's trying to get him to, to the point to realize that all the fear and all the anxiety is really coming from him. So he has to go through those things to really, you know, hone his skills and see how it's going to work for him when he continues to practice this and keep it going. Sure. And, and you know just, yeah, and absolutely. In addition to that, you've got the same fears and same challenges on the other side with women. And if you get two people right. and, you know, with the same fear, they're never going to talk to each other. So, no, I think the steps right. are great. They, now, one of the other challenges that you run into would be what? 
Um, I say that the, I say that the, so some of the challenges that men have is just um, you know basically the the overall confidence they have in themselves. Like I think a lot of men don't value themselves. They think that you know we've been trained actually as men to feel like we need to do everything for the woman. Everything is about the woman. Make sure she's impressed. Make sure, you know, she's, uh, you know, you do this and do that for her. So, it, you know, no one has ever said to you, like, you know, what do you want? What are, your, what are you like? What are you about? What are you, you know, what, what's interesting about you? So guys almost feel like they're auditioning for acceptance from women. And then that, that makes their, their confidence be low because it's kind of like, oh, I, I hope this woman likes me. I hope that she, you know, uh, uh, accepts me so I can feel good about myself. So the thing is, I you know I kind of teach guys: look, you got to understand that you're you are already valuable with or without the woman. You understand? So that's the that's the challenge I get a lot of times where certain guys, you know, they have trouble tapping into their confidence, tapping into what makes them interesting, tapping into you know what it is, what it is about them that's unique. And every guy has something interesting about him. Every guy has something that's you know awesome and 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 spectacular about that that particular guy. But since he's not since he's been focusing too much on trying to get women or, or impress them, he hasn't taken enough time to figure out what makes him interesting. And when you do that. That's what makes you know the women more attractive to you because you know who you are and you know what you're about. Now, you uh, yeah, we're just about out of time, but let me do it before we do because uh, there was about probably 35, 40 years ago, there was a club in Hollywood, right on um, uh, uh, what was it, La Cienega Boulevard, and it was great. Right. And, uh, it was called the what was it? What was it? Oh, it'll come to me in a minute, but <laughs> a long time ago. All right. Uh, what, <laughs> what it had? It had tables in it, and each table had a mm. number. And each table right. had a telephone on it. So you'd sit at mm-hmm. the table and you'd see a woman that you wanted to dance with or whatever. She was a table for. You picked up the phone. Right. The direct line. That was the name of the place. The direct line. And you'd pick up the right. phone. you call number four. you ask her if she wanted to dance or whatever. Now, if she said no, all you had to do is hang up. You didn't have to get embarrassed and walk up there and be rejected. They should have more clubs like right. that. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. Do you have a website we can find you at? Yeah, definitely. You can go to my website. It's uh, MrLocario.com. That's Mr. M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. So you go there, you can get all my books, all my DVDs, all my programs. And you also, if you go there now, you can sign up and to get my free ebook uh, of the Magnificent Ten Crucial Dating Tips for Men. Wonderful. Hey, by the way, thank you so much for joining us. Yo, definitely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. You take care. 